this book ruined me. Everyone needs to go and read this book ASAP because Taryn Fisher is a genius. Welcome to my channel. My name is Alaska Walters. I am the author of three fiction novels with a fourth on the way. And today I am reviewing The Wrong Family by Taryn Fisher. Now, just before we jump right in, I wanted to give a quick announcement because I'm so excited about this. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you wouldn't know. But I have recently just been monetized on YouTube, yay, which I have been trying to do for literally the past year, maybe more. If you don't know and you're new here, I used to be monetized on a beauty channel that I had a few years ago and then I deleted that channel and started fresh and now I have been trying to get monetized on this channel ever since. It has finally happened, but something super annoying also happened. So I got monetized and when I was going through the terms and conditions and everything, just like going along ticking things. And then I ticked a box that was at the bottom of the page. <clears throat> and as it was loading, I realized that it said leave monetization. So, so frustrating. So it kicked me out of monetization and now I've contacted YouTube and I've tried to get back in and they basically said to me that I need to just start my hours again. So since I applied last time, my hours have dropped, which is so annoying. So now I need to get like 20 more hours to get back into reapply for monetization again, which is oh, so frustrating. But I'm excited that I got monetized in the first place because I know now I can do it and as long as I get these 20 hours again, I can just get back into monetization and said I had already earned three cents in the time before I checked that box. So that was exciting to know because there was like, I think from being approved to me ticking that box was like a few hours. Also, everyone in my house is sick at the moment and I feel like I'm coming down with something. So I quickly wanted to film this video before I'm sick again because we were just all sick two weeks ago and literally we've been sick back to back since my son started at daycare so yeah it's just like in the short periods of time where i'm not sick i'm trying to quickly go and get as much done as i can good news though is that i've been doing a lot of writing getting a lot of words done and i am writing book two of my unbreakable series if you don't know now that those updates are all out of the way let's go ahead and jump into the video so I had this book in my Kindle for quite a while and I started reading it and I was really intrigued and then Emma Jones's new book Antichrist came out which I had been waiting to read for like six months so I stopped reading and read that and then I came back to The Wrong Family and this book is so interesting the way that it's written because it has like you know how they have different points of views per chapter so in this book, it's like that, but instead of being the characters like through their eyes, it's through their eyes, but being narrated, if that makes sense. So it's like a narrator is telling you what's going on with that person. And then the next chapter, the next person. So that is super different. And I've never seen or read anything like that before. So that piqued my interest already. And then the book starts with Juno who is an old lady and she's basically living in these people's house. And you kind of get that from the very beginning because in the beginning of the book, it says that she came downstairs and she was scraping off bits of rice out of container because the family hadn't gone shopping yet and she was trying to eat without them noticing anything was different but then the book gets a bit confusing because at first i thought that she was living there too but then it said that she was old and it kind of hinted that she was old and have had aching bones and things like that so i thought maybe she was living with them and was like one of their parents or something like or the grandma the mother-in-law and she just didn't want to interact with the family but then it shows that she's having conversations with the family's son, who's a teenage boy, and she's having conversations with him out in the garden. So then I thought, okay, so 
maybe she is meant to be living there and then there's just all these twists and turns and it's just crazy so <clears throat> from the tropes that i can gather is marriage in trouble yeah i think that's pretty much the trope marriage in trouble but then it's it is a thriller and it does keep you on the edge of your seat and it's like every time you think you know what's going on all of a sudden something new comes in and some twists and turns so basically the family that she's living with she watched them in the park every day going on their walks and stuff and she thought like what a beautiful family so she followed them home one day and just to see where they lived out of curiosity she was a psychologist when she was younger and she just was interested in people and watching them and learning how they did things and where they lived and things like that so she follows his family home and she looks at this beautiful house and then they happen to be renovating when she comes back again one day they're renovating their house no and she comes and sees that the house is unlocked the builders have left the house unlocked so she wanders in having a sticky beak and then she gets locked in there when the family unexpectedly comes home and they have this security system and she never sees them like typing the code so she never knows what it is so basically she's living in their house and she doesn't want to be there she's really scared that she's going to get caught but there's just no opportunity to escape and then over time she's just there longer and longer and she starts to get comfortable there and like like listening to their conversations because she is a psychologist so she's interested in things like that and i don't know if i've mentioned this but she was homeless prior to this so her husband kicked her out and he and their sons kind of moved away and i don't know if i just missed it so please someone tell me in the comments if you've read it and you know but i didn't ever read a part where they say why her husband left her because i was kind of waiting to find that out the whole time and i never found it out so yeah i was a bit confused about that part but it was kind of a minor part of the story anyway so then she's living with the family and listening to everything and then their son tells her that he feels like his parents aren't his parents so she's kind of digging into this stuff and she hears over here's a conversation between the parents and it just sounds like he's not theirs and it's just crazy so she goes on this hunt looking for abducted children and things like that and then she's using their computer to look and then the wife goes on the computer one day and finds this search history and she's like what the heck and she thinks it's her husband looking up this information and she starts freaking out because it makes it seem like her husband doesn't really know or like the child isn't his so in a conversation that Juno overheard the husband says to the wife at least I didn't steal a child so Juno of course assumes that it's this child that is living with them so she's trying to find reasoning and who this child's parents are and she's not sure what to do and then it's just all interconnected and twisted and then you find out sorry this has a lot of spoilers in it by the way i'm just going to tell you what happens so basically it turns out that the wife was a social worker and she took a different baby from this drug addict lady and she was going to take the baby to the hospital but she never made it because she had a car accident and the baby died then this child that lives with them is actually their child so that's what Juno overheard but misunderstood so then with all of that going on Juno finds the mother of this drug addict lady who is now dead but she invites her mother over to the house writes her an email from their computer and tells them that her grandchild is living there so already this is like a crazy thing so this lady shows up and knocks on the door and basically confronts this lady the wife and she's like what the hell and she doesn't know what's going on because this is her child and it's just so crazy and one major detail i just realized i left out so the wife who lives in the house her twin brother comes and stays with them from time to time 
because he has problems in his marriage as well so he comes and stays with them but he's kind of a drunk and he's kind of a loser and he's like i don't know a bit weird it shows flashbacks from when they were kids and he's kind of a bit of an abuser like to animals and to his siblings and things like that but all of the sisters in the family always take him in and anyway and like treat him like he's a baby and he's god's gift and whatever so anyway he was staying with them but her husband and her brother always argue and just her husband does not want him there and it's not a secret that he doesn't want him there so anyway when this lady comes to confront the wife about the child the grandchild her brother runs in and to their house and he's shot the lady's husband so basically she has this lady there telling her she's going to take her child and then her husband's just been shot by her brother and then Juno's like, holy shit, what did I do? And tries to escape. But something happens with that too. So Juno's caused all this trouble and she's like, I don't know if I should just stay in the roof and listen to what happens or should I escape? I can always just go and watch this on the news at the homeless shelter. Anyway, she tries to escape and the brother gets her. And then the story kind of skips along to the end where it's in someone else's point of view and he's moved in to this house the lady took her child and left because her husband's now dead because he was shot by her brother so she just wants a fresh start she moves so now it's in the perspective of the guy who lives in this house now and basically this guy smells something strange so he goes snooping and he finds a hidden latch door he opens the door and in there he finds a dead Juno and the brother who is also dead because Juno shot him. So I think the gun was in Juno's hand and he was trying to catch her. He had her by the leg and it's both their skeletons <laughs> in this guy's house. So that's a big surprise to this guy. And meanwhile, the wife didn't know where her brother was so she was terrified that her brother was going to come after her child um because he was looking for him to shoot him as well he was just going on a shooting rampage of everyone in the house basically um and yeah so her brother was missing so this guy discovers him and yeah that's the end of the story so i have left out a lot of details there's so much goes on in this book it is such a good read and if you're not convinced by this video because i feel like i kind of just skimmed over it really quickly but trust me this book you need to read this book it is so so good it is one of the best reads i've read in a long time uh, there's two books that i can't stop thinking about that is one of them and the other one is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo which i've done a review on as well and those books are just constantly on my mind. I can't stop thinking about them. That was so good. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel. Like this video, comment down below. And I do have a Patreon where I share writing tips and writing advice and support. If you're writing a book, I do have a tier or writing a magazine. I make magazine videos on here too. So if you're needing support in any area, you can sign up to that tier and I will help you in any way I can. Alternatively, you can sign up to the magazine makers tier where I have templates and contact lists for people in the magazine industry and so many resources. Or you can sign up to my writing tier where I have also resources and contact lists for people for bookstores that will take your self-published books and just a bunch of other stuff book templates and all sorts of things like that so if you would like to check out my patreon the link will be down below you can also follow me on instagram because i do a lot of writing updates on there and i'm just constantly putting book updates as i write and just updates about my life and all of that stuff in general 
so if you would like to do any of that the links will all be down below but thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video